I'll turn to Brad. Brad, what are some of the patient factors when you consider in deciding uh, how to start it, um, how do you monitor it, uh, and again, the expectations we give to people about the medicines? Sure. Well, I think for the uh, cholinesterase inhibitors, the um, they're efficacious and they've been demonstrated to be efficacious, as, as Mark said, in, in patients with mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. There's also efficacy data in uh, patients with Lewy body dementia. I think some of the best responders to these medications are often people with Lewy body dementia. There have been other smaller studies that suggest that they might be helpful with vascular dementia or with other pathologies that lead to memory impairment, including multiple sclerosis and traumatic brain injury. Um, so there are a variety of potential patient populations that could benefit. I think in general, um, there, there hasn't been data to show that they've been effective in patients with mild cognitive impairment, um, even if it's uh, thought to be due to Alzheimer's, but those, those studies have not really been conducted in a focused, modern way. So I think we often see off-label use of these medications in patients with amnesic mild cognitive impairment in particular. And I think there's anecdotal evidence that they benefit those patients. So um, I think uh, it's always important to, to uh, uh, continue along the discussion of diagnostic di disclosure that Mary mentioned by uh, trying to understand what the um, patients and families' interests in medications are, what their experience with medications uh, is. And um, I think it's often the case that when we explain that these uh, medications do have side effects like any medications, but that for the most part, they're quite manageable, that a trial of an, a cholinesterase inhibitor in a patient with mild Alzheimer's dementia is met well uh, from the perspective of the, of the patient and family member. There's often the hope uh, that they can do things beyond what we believe they're going to be able to do. So I think it's always important to set the expectation that, that not everybody even has a noticeable response uh, in their daily lives to these medications. And uh, even if they do, uh, they don't, as Mark said, affect disease progression in a way that would um, suggest slowing of the disease process. Um, so I often draw a, a curve that shows uh, progression if you don't treat it. Um, a, a parallel curve that is up a little bit uh, to show that you know you might get a little bit of a boost in your memory or other cognitive abilities, but that the rate of progression is going to likely remain mostly largely the same. Um, and then later on, if you add memantine, uh, you might get a similar boost, but again, the rate of progression overall will be the same, but maybe you would maintain function uh, above where you would have been if you weren't taking this combination therapy as you've shown with some of your own data. So I think that setting those expectations and often with a, a graphical uh, support to really drive that fact home that the progression is gonna still happen um, and um, you know that we, we may see some benefit, but um, even if we don't, just because the patient is declining uh, doesn't mean that the medicine's not working. And I think that can be a hard thing to judge. Sometimes what we see is that if people, the clinician and the patient and care partner have been on donepezil or another cholinesterase inhibitor for a year and they're worse off, everybody kind of feels like, is this thing really even doing anything? You might do a trial off of it and the patient is clearly worse than they were when they were on it. So that can be one way to make a judgment. I think a lot of times uh, if the patient's tolerating, it, tolerating the medication well, we just hope that it's working and continue it. Um, and so, you know, I think some patients don't tolerate these medications well. They have substantial GI side effects that are persistent and that can be challenging. Um, often trying one of the other cholinesterase inhibitor uh, oral medications is the easiest way to go in, in seeing if they might be able to tolerate um, one of the other medications in the same class. There are also transdermal formulations that can be tried as well if the person is particularly sensitive to GI side effects. So I think those are some of the things that I um, use in, in my consideration. Uh, when a patient clearly has a non-Alzheimer um, form of dementia, such as frontotemporal degeneration, these medications don't help uh, in terms of the AD medications. They sometimes can even uh, sort of activate uh, patients in ways that lead to more disruptive behavioral symptoms. So I think it's important to talk about the um, standard approved medications. It's also important to talk about the symptoms that we can treat uh, with other kinds of medications that, that are often very um, helpful in, in dealing with uh, some of the symptoms that Mark has been talking about in relation to mood-related symptoms. 
uh, potentially psychosis, uh, which can be so devastating for uh, families to deal with. Uh, so I think considering those medications, including ones with efficacy data or sometimes just off-label use is important to discuss with patients and families.